So we're with uh, J.P. Harris from Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Performed uh, at uh, Once Upon a Time the West. So, was this your first time at the this festival? Yeah, this is uh, the first time ever meeting a whole crowd of people like this anywhere in in I'd say anywhere in Western Europe. Actually, mm -hmm. it was a pretty unbelievable group of folks to play to. Very different than our normal base of fans because there were so many incredible artists here. Yeah, it, it, unbelievable. Is um. So it's your first time in the Netherlands as well? No, we've been here. We've been, we've been in the Netherlands, yeah. Uh, our, our whole operation's kind of based out of the Netherlands, our booking agent, our tour manager, all that. Um, and we've had some amazing times here, but I've kind of been wondering where all the other artists are hiding out. <laughs> and I think mm -hmm. I found them all tonight. Again, then. <laughs> yeah. Did, um, how is the crowd here different than, than, uh, than it is back home? Well, you know, sometimes we find that people want to observe what we're doing a lot right. more than participate in it. Mm -hmm. And back home it can be the same thing. Or we have the other end of the spectrum where uh, people are there just because it's a good band and they're just yeah. dancing, they don't give a damn who we are, uh, whether we wrote the songs or not. And what was really interesting about tonight was that we were playing to a bunch of musicians and a bunch of people who live and breathe mm -hmm. the music that happens here in Netherlands. So experiencing a uh, uh, a coalescing of artists and musicians uh, being the crowd that you're playing to is it's a really rare thing to find anywhere yeah do you think because uh, the country scene is uh, is a it would be a niche over here that it that plays in your advantage yeah i think so you know in a funny way back home we also play to a niche because um, the commercial country world has taken over the radio and music videos mm. and everything so much in the last 20 years that playing really traditional music has become almost a specialty. You know, there's very few other right. bands, at least bands that tour like we do all around the U.S., who play traditional country music like we do. So um, in a funny way, it's almost not any more specialized here than it is back home. You know, okay. people are more familiar with it where we come from, but... Um, but I feel like there's a really supportive fan base for it here too. You mentioned in your performance, you just touched upon it a little bit, uh, about the commercialization of the music industry. So what, what, what experiences have you had that you know, have led you to you know, being angry at that? Well, you know, I, when I was a lot younger, I think, I, was, I think anger was more the feeling that I experienced when I looked at how difficult it was for people who made um, non-commercial music to have any sort of success and now um, the further along in my music career I've gotten the more I've realized that um, there's no need for commercial success for people like me but what we need is um, to find our community and our mm -hmm. groups of people um, because there will always be pop culture there will always be people who just want to shop at the mall and listen to anything that's on the radio whether it's good or bad and then there will be a whole nother undercurrent of people who believe in um, the independent creation of uh, ideas, art, food, music, all of it. And, um, and I just hope to eventually uh, become more well-known to more people in that world because those are the people who bring about change in the entire world. Uh, right. So that, you know, there's commercial music and that's great for a lot of people because a lot of people don't care enough to really pay attention to what's going on down below in the underbelly, and mm. uh, that's where I feel most comfortable, so I'm fine down there. <laughs> but then you end up here, which is a great step. I mean, oh, you're yeah. touring worldwide. Um, so how, how do you, how did you guys start the band? How did you, you know, manage to get your name out to, to the Netherlands even? Man, uh, you know, as much as most musicians uh, bitch about the internet killing the music industry, <laughs> I think the internet has probably helped the independent music world in a lot of ways. Um, I started about eight or nine years ago. Uh, the band behind me has always been a rotating cast of people, you know, um, all good friends of mine that come and go and tour for a year. I don't see them for a couple years, I come back. Um, and the and the, uh, the ethos, the idea, has always been that we have to take the music out to the people. And that's not easy to do. It, we don't make any money sometimes. Um, you know, you sleep in a, the back of a van in a truck stop parking lot on your way to the next gig. Um, so you have to believe that what you're doing is worthwhile and matters to people. And if you do it long enough, you find the people who support what you do. And um, 
I think that's all I've done. You know, I never got any lucky breaks. I never got any big piece of publicity or press. Um, and, you know, because of the internet, again, the music just spread itself over here naturally mm -hmm. to people. And um, I, and it's, it's just a really amazing thing. It used to be that you would mail a tape over and hope that someone copied it for their friends. And nowadays you show up in a town in northern Sweden and 300 people know who I am, you know. So it's a... It's worked out pretty well. It does it does? What's the what's your what's your best experience that you can remember? Like a really funny, or funny experience that you ha that happened on the road? Who? Uh, Something you would like to share? Well, last night I played right before uh, some Dutch mud wrestling, which was pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know I've I, uh, I've played in a in a dairy barn and a pile of cow shit up to my ankles. Um, <laughs> You know, I've played on the backs of pickup trucks that were driving down the middle of a road. I've done all, you know, the, uh, I don't think there's any one experience that's ever been better than the Shame. rest. <laughs> love, love to see a video of that. Is there anything around? I'm Is sure it, somewhere, if you dig deep enough, people have documented what we've done. Probably. <laughs> I've played uh, pretty much naked a couple times. You know, we've had some interesting, yeah. interesting well, times. Some bands do that. that. Yeah. It works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um... Which moment in a concert when you're performing, which moment is, you know, that hypes you up? Like, what's the moment that you really look forward to the most? When I see the crowd start moving, you mm -hmm. know, and that's, uh, you know, some towns we go to, like we go to Austin, Texas, and that's a town known for dancing. So as soon as we hit the stage, people know we're going to play dance music, they start dancing. But, mm -hmm. but most of the time, you kind of have to work at them. You have to heckle them a little bit. And you got to, it's almost like, a, you know, you got a couple of dogs out in the park and you're trying to, get them to get rowdy and you start swatting at them, you know? So that's yeah. what musically what we do is we start swatting at everybody in the crowd. We're like, come on now, come on, get at it. And uh, when you finally see the crowd start to dance and move around, that's when you know you've hit your stride and you're doing your job right. And what three things do you like the most about the Netherlands? Oh my God. Uh, slope waffles are probably the first. Uh, it's very flat and easy to bike in mm -hmm. and um, I would say that everyone here is socially very well adjusted, which makes for an incredibly um, even keel experience for us. You know, we have, uh, none of us have ever felt more comfortable than anywhere here in the Netherlands outside of our own home, because uh, I think it's such an international country at this point mm -hmm. that um, it just feels like people understand differences more than a lot of other places in the world. It's, it's really nice. So we really, really dig being here. Third point? Uh, well, you know, we like smoking weed, and uh, <laughs> you got some of that here too. So uh, I don't know. The third point would probably be. Uh, uh, yeah, it'd probably be, it'd probably be weed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking to uh, forward to the weed legalization in the USA would do? Uh, well, you know, so far it's actually, uh, at this point, we're actually leading the world, the entire globe, uh, in uh, progressive marijuana laws. Um, and it's, it's increasing education budgets in a lot of, uh, a lot of states. Um, it, the medical legalization has helped a lot of people with terminal illness. So um, despite how backwards our country is in most ways, um, I'm really impressed to see how far uh, marijuana is a medicinal uh, tool has uh, furthered itself in our country in the last decade and um, you know the, the point that a lot of people whether they sit on the left or the right side of the fence will agree on where I come from is that I have never seen anyone get in a bar fight in a coffee shop high on weed so kind of hard to do it's pretty it's hard, hard to, to do to so point. I feel like uh, you know is as, as strange and as hippy dippy as it sounds I think that um, you know, eventually marijuana will become something that's both medically and socially beneficial to a lot more people in the world. Hopefully just chill everybody the fuck out a little bit. So. <laughs> Let's get on it. Awesome. <laughs> um, finally, what, what are the future plans of the band? What, what are you doing after this one? Uh, uh, well, we're going to fly home in the morning and um, I'm going to take it easy for about three days and then we head back out for a weekend, play a few more shows. Um, but we just recorded a new record, 
um, about a week and a half before I left on this tour. Um, so we're just going to get down to business on figuring out how to get that out to the people. It's been about three and a half years since I released my last record, so I'm excited to um, put some new music in the world, um, you know, just uh, be home and ride my bike and split some firewood and do some of that kind of stuff for a little while and then get ready to get back out on the road pretty heavy next year. So uh, just gearing up for, for a high gear again. Good luck. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. man. Thanks.